Hey Silas here. I have this ongoing theme of different things happening for the same reasons and in this video I'm going to discuss hypergamy and two different things that happen due to that same reason. Now hypergamy, which is colloquially known as marrying up, is a tendency of females to get to be attracted to males in a higher social status, in a higher social rank. This was usually seen in marriage, in coupling, which was often pretty much the only time non-related females actually used to deal with other males was when they were entering the coupling situation. So it was clear to see it in that way. It wasn't that it wasn't that shocking. It wasn't that controversial to discuss that this is how females approach a um, strange male. Females approach males outside of their relationships here, outside of their family, outside of their tribe in this sense. Their direct clan, okay, tribe maybe not. But that was understood. That was a general accepted thing in society. Now that societies are expanding, now that you're getting situations where females and males are interacting in many other spheres, besides in a relationship romantic sense to create a family, that hypergamy hasn't gone away. That relationship hasn't gone away. It's just changing in how it's acted upon, how it shows itself, how it is displayed. And I think a very good example is looking at the female rights movements, be it feminism or just other comparisons that people have in the current time, current year, current location. My current location is New York City. Great example is you already have a situation where young professional, young female professionals between 20 and 26, I think, are already out earning males of that same age. Yet those female professionals are still highly likely to be the very same ones supporting feminist movements, supporting the idea that, claiming the idea that this is still a male-centric society. Those are the same females that went through university and are graduating at, I think, 55% to 60% rate to the males who are graduating at the 40% to 45% in comparison. They're still talking about how universities are anti-female, how they're how they're a dangerous location for females. There's a rape culture going on there. We need to have more programs for females because hypergamy, that's still there. They only have eyes. They only see the males higher than them. They cannot actually even register. They, I mean, of course you see them, but they don't register them as someone to have in their equation, in their way to look at the future, in their planning. They can walk by the streets and in New York, there's a big homeless problem, and there's 25, I mean, it's about 85% of the homeless people in the United States of America are males. They don't see those males. They only see the mayor. They only see the CEOs. Those are the only people that they see, like, yes, those are the people I'm comparing with because those are the people I have eyes for. Now, why is this? Why did this develop? This developed in an excellent, for an excellently understandable reason and it is still there in our society, in our, I think it goes down to a genetic level, but it's there in our society because in the past and still today, if you're going to be a very effective mother, you are going to be encumbered or limited in your ability to be out in society and creating things and earning things and getting resources while you have your child, while you're pregnant, gestating, and then after you're breastfeeding, you're caring for the child, you're building the bonds, you're taking care of the home, which is a very important thing. Those things take time. They took time in the past, they take time today. So it makes sense that the society that we developed, that the gene sets that were selected for, were ones that are more conducive to this sort of relationship, this relationship of seeking males that can provide as many resources as possible in Okay, so resources was one of the things. I think the secondary thing, of course, was the safety for being able to secure your physical safety and the safety of your future and potential kids. Now, why the women didn't really don't really care about how that is done, and you still see this in an extent with the bad boy situation, or you see this in a lot of crime movies, or you see this in a lot of situations with politicians who can can be doing some unsavory things. But when you have the state to the size that it is, having a school, like having political power is a form of attaining resources. Women don't really care about how you attain that resources. In general, females don't really care about how you attain those resources. You could be a criminal, you could be a drug dealer, and you could be out selling drugs, and then that drug you sell ends up 
being bought by somebody else who ends up breaking it down and selling that to somebody else and then that person goes and commits a crime and while he's committing a crime that person who he's with ends up shooting somebody else or that money is somehow four or five people away funding a drug war in a different co country females can be okay with that as long as end of the day you still come home and you still put the five hundred dollars on the table and that still supports her livelihood and that still puts a roof over her head that still puts some food in your children's mouths they can turn a blind eye to that because historically in our evolutionary environment life and death was a very constant aspect of resource provision if you had a society that developed saying okay you can't have life or death be part of your provision you would die off if you had women or people if you had culture that taught the females be very concerned with how the man provides the resources. If the man is actually killing people or har harming something else for those resources, don't couple with that person. Those genes would have gone away because in the past, in some situations, it used to involve killing people who you knew, killing people in your clan, killing the next tribe because they're starving, they want something for their kids. Is the male in your family going to be able to defend you to the death, risk their life and limb? Are they going to be out there hunting the animals? Are they going to be out there protecting the, the, the family from actual predators? Are they going to be planting? Are they going to be fishing? This direct life and death. Females and males understood that females understood males killed to provide these resources. Males understood we had to kill to provide these resources. So now you have a society where things are spread apart and life and death, which I think is something we can all agree being alive is better than being dead if you're still watching this you're not currently killing yourself so i think you can agree on that so that shows that yes that's a different thing that's the same thing we're understanding and now it's, it's showing in a different way in the current society and that's us also why i think it doesn't really matter when you flip it over and females say okay now that i'm earning all this money now that i'm doing this now that i've taken this amount of stress to do this to get this high earning job how come a male doesn't find that to be they don't account for that. You have older women saying like, oh yeah, I'm in my 30s, I have this great job, I'm making six figures. How come this does not make me more attractive to males? Because it's not what we've selected for. It's not something we're interested in. Males are not hypergamous in that nature. They probably are in generally, I mean, you, we are hypergamous in the nature where we're looking, but what we're using as resources, what we're using as beneficial is the ability to reproduce, the ability to gestate, the ability to give birth, ability to get pregnant, which in a situation you either have that over us or you don't. And now it gets to the point where when you get older, your ability to have that, your earning power is lower. So with the resource provision, so females are bringing to the table the ability to gestate and then males are supposed to match that ability with the ability to acquire resources, physical resources in the world, be that money, be that food, be that security, but to secure the access to the valuable, invaluable resource that the females have in the ability to reproduce. Now, part of the reason I think relationships aren't working as well is we're using something that was designed for coupling, for marriage, for reproduction, and trying to do something different with it, trying to achieve a different end goal. We're using the system without the end goal in mind. We're coupling together and saying, oh, we just want to hook up. We just want to be friends. We just want somebody to hang out with. We're not really planning on having a family, but then that could be something in the future. Then whatever rules and ideas that you go through to actually get in that relationship, the things you're selecting for are not the things that process was made for, was made to find out, to identify. So you get to the situation where people get into relationships, get down the line, they finally start thinking, okay, maybe I want a relationship now, maybe I want the actual end goal of the relationship, I actually want a marriage, I actually want a family, and everything they selected for, most of the things they selected for, are not the person that they're with. They're not with somebody who's focused on being a parent, they're not with somebody who's able to have a job which is conducive to actually parenting, to having kids, to having a, as low a stress job, or at least switching the stressors to family-centric to procreation-centric things versus resource provision things. And now with a male, you have a male who's selected towards familial 
personal support things that were usually achieved by other females or by a closer extended family or a closer extended tribe or clan and you're selecting for that in the direct mail so you're getting things out of the mail that were not intended to be searched for in the mail in the relationship sense and males are looking for things in females without understanding the end goal of why those things were beneficial I think a good example to talk about here is the education system, especially here in the United States of America. You have a system where it was organized for imparting knowledge. That's an agreed thing. The schooling system here in America was used to impart knowledge. What kind of knowledge was it used to impart? It's based off the Prussian system, and the Prussian system was there to create soldiers because they were in a time of need where they needed males to go through that system and be prepared to come out and be functioning soldiers in society if they were called for. Times were a lot more warlike, and you see this across the board. You see this in other societies as well. Societies where the Prussian system has never arrived. You see this in Asia, you see this in Africa. The way kids are trained, especially the males, is to create a more subservient, a more warrior-like end. It's not to create a critical thinker. It's not to create the things that may make somebody a lot more capable of providing resources in the current time with this current advanced time in the information age. So you have a situation where the intention of the schooling system is still working, but the results are different. So people are wondering, okay, why are you sending people through this but not getting the same results? Why are females going through this system but not getting the same results? Why do we have to change this system so much and when we start changing this system, it seems to disadvantage the males? because the system was male-centric, but it was also male-centric to create a whole different kind of male that is not necessarily needed to that extent in that society. And you see that in relationships. You see that with hypergamy. You see that with the relations between the sexes, between the genders. If you don't understand why these things were created, you don't understand the purpose of these things, then looking at the result is, can be confusing. So I'm going to call it a video here. Links are going to be in the low bar to other people who have discussed hypergamy. And I first heard about this in the MGTOW community, which I'm going to talk about more in other videos. It's a man going their own way community. One thing I do really agree with that community is if you don't want to get married, if you don't want to get married and have kids, you probably shouldn't be getting in a relationship. And I think a big part of the reason why people have frustrations with relationships, both be it in the MGTOW relationship in the MGTOW, in the MGTOW sphere, in the manosphere, be it feminists, be it whichever group has difficulty with understanding relationships or frustrations with the way relationships work or male to female relations, is we have lost the understanding of how focused male to female relationships were based off of coupling together, forming connections to reproduce and create the next generation. If that is not your main focus, then whatever you're thinking of as a relationship probably needs to be broken down and built back up to form an entire different thing. And I think that's an okay thing to do. What I would like to do with that as well, though, is to leave the institution of relationships by itself and then create something new. Don't say we have to break down the institution of marriage because it's still a positive thing for people who want to raise kids and have families. Don't break that down, just create your own thing. Don't tear down those monuments because they had a purpose. Just try to form something new. But yeah, that's it for now. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk about this more. And again, different things happen for the same reasons. And part of the main, part of the main problems, I mean, pretty much all the problems in the world happen because people are defining X by how they define it instead of what X actually is. Those are two main things that I'm going to be going through and working through with my videos and observations. But yeah, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Until next video, goodbye.